again, there's been quite a lot of research looking at the inflammatory profile or the immune profile in, in people or in patients with ME. And again, the picture that emerges is that there may be some changes in, in immune activity. For example, a cell called natural killer cells, their, their, their um, function is, has been observed to be reduced in people with ME. There's also some suggestion that other cells like T cells may have altered activity in people with ME, but overall there doesn't seem to be convincing evidence of elevated inflammatory cytokines in patients with ME. And that has been somewhat of a puzzle um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the literature to date. Why is it that, um, that inflammatory cytokines are not persistently raised in individuals with ME? So, so what about after naturalistic infections? Do we see evidence of increased inflammation in the blood after naturalistic infections? And again, the answer to that question is quite interesting. Um, and again, this draws on the work of Andrew Lloyd in, in Sydney in Australia. But what he's shown is that individuals that have natural infections with Epstein-Barr virus or, or other viruses or bacteria show an initial inflammatory response, as would be expected. However, within a few weeks to months, evidence of inflammation within the blood returns to normal. And what's very interesting is that this inflammation returns to normal even in people who have persistent symptoms of chronic fatigue, uh, cognitive impairment, and, and a range of other symptoms like headaches. So it suggests it's possible to have persistence of these symptoms after an infection, even when the inflammation or signs of inflammation in the blood return to normal. So again, this is another very interesting question. So what happens in the brains of people after they've had a naturalistic infection? Is there any evidence of increased inflammation in their brain after naturalistic infection? And unfortunately, the answer to that question is currently unknown. However, what is known now and has been very recently shown is that if you take a previously healthy individual and you inflame them, you can see an increase in activity in immune cells within the brain, cells called microglia, within three to four hours of an acute inflammatory episode. Now, we don't know how long that rem this activation remains high, but it could be that those individuals that experience ongoing chronic symptoms after an infection could have increased inflammation in their brain after um, this inflammatory challenge. And further evidence that I think is quite interesting is the data from patients with ME who have been shown to have increased microglial activation in their brains, suggesting that maybe this could be what one would anticipate to see after a chronic infection. So is there any evidence of, of brain inflammation in ME? Um, until recently, that would have been quite a difficult question to answer. However, last year there was some work from a Japanese group using PET imaging, which is a type of imaging um, using a marker for activation of brain immune cells, so microglia. And what this group has shown is that there does seem to be increased activation of these brain immune cells in patients with ME. Now, I think this is very exciting research, but one should bear in mind it's, it's only in a very small population at the moment. It's only nine patients with ME were investigated. So this is work that really needs to be further explored. So what are microglial cells? Well, microglia are the main immune cell in the brain, and they're really unusual cells in that their appearance is quite different from macrophages, their equivalent cell within the blood. Um, now, these cells within the brain, until, rec until recently, were considered largely 
to be there to mop up damage within the brain. So if cells are killed within the brain, it was believed that their principal role was to, to help remove debris um, within the brain. However, within the last five, 10 years, it's become increasingly clear that these microglial cells likely have very many interesting functions, either, even within the healthy brain. So there's data suggesting that these microglial cells may play a role in the development of the brain. So how neurons change their connections with one another, um, a process um, called dendritic pruning, and also a role in, in how we learn. So at the moment, evidence is emerging quite rapidly that these immune cells within the brain probably have very important roles, even in the healthy brain, and in functions such as memory and learning. So this is a, a, a field that is, is, is rapidly developing, um, exploring exactly how broad the functions of these cells are.